Hi, this is a uh, module overview for the uh, Grade 6 Module 1 um, within the story of ratios for the New York State uh, Curriculum for Mathematics. My name is Gene Jordan. I uh, work here at Broom Tower Globosis as a Math Professional Development Specialist. And I will give you a brief overview of what you can hope to see in Module 1. The um, components of Module 1 are um, made up of topics, and the objectives for me today will just give you a an idea of the instructional approaches, uh, topics and lessons that are found in there, so a couple of examples, uh, especially things that are new. So if you're a current teacher of 6 through 8, uh, maybe you'll see some things new this year, and I want to give you guys a heads up. The uh, structure of the modules is um, going to change from previous lessons you might have taught, and they fit within a six-module year. This is, of course, the first one. One thing of note I usually make is the uh, 35 days that they give for Module 1 are not 35 instructional days. That includes um, five, six days for assessment and remediation. Here's the structure. You'll see topic A's, B, C, and D. And you'll see lessons that correspond to each of those. I personally... If you're using a quiz type of assessment, because waiting for the mid-module and the module assessment is going to be a while, I think the topics are nice because those are a good break um, of the learning, and you could um, go ahead and assess them there if you were choosing to. Let's look at the actual review. The lesson study. We'll look at the components of each lesson. That's actually uh, interesting here because they include a Socratic dialogue within the lesson, which I don't know if it's very common among math teachers. That's it's, it's a lengthy discussion sometimes. It's going to be a short discussion, but they typically go in depth. Uh, and I'll discuss it a little bit on the next slide. Modeling, cycle exploration, and problem sets are all found within the lessons. You'll see the usual things that uh, we expect to see in the lesson. Uh, what's new for some teachers is certainly not concept development, but application problems, real world examples, uh, given in the form of a word problem. There will be lots of reading there is throughout the modules. Uh, you'll look at two, one of the more important ones, and to me, the most important um, component of any lesson is the exit ticket here. And that exit ticket is a, is a change for some, but the idea here is it's a daily formative assessment on your learning. I think it's fantastic that they include them, um, but uh, it is difficult to fit those things at the end of the period, so you really do have to plan ahead. I want to talk more about the... Um, components of the lessons because you'll see these switch uh, around or use different ones in different lessons. And the problem sets are nothing, I think, new. The exploratory lessons are usually activities and uh, they comprise the majority of the lesson. The Socratic discussion is, uh, is when you're talking about big ideas or proof, for example. And we'll talk about one that's included in the grade six. Modeling is found throughout math, and we'll use all types of models. Here's some examples of models. The uh, tape dagger and double number line, I think, are the newest teachers. So if you haven't already um, worked on those, you might want to work on a couple uh, tape diagrams and double number lines before diving into the modules. Use examples from the modules or from another book, um, and you'll get to be an expert at those in no time. I think a dozen or so problems um, under your belt, and you'll feel very comfortable with those. We also have, of course, ratio tables and coordinate planes, which I think most teachers are very comfortable with, and they were the bread and butter of uh, most ratio discussions in middle school. Nothing surprising here. You'll see the um, lessons. This is actually half of the lessons. Go ahead and at your leisure, look through the titles. It'll give you a good overview of what's happening in this module. The module lessons come with outcomes. Just be wary that they may not be written in a student-friendly words, um, using student-friendly language. You might want to reconsider rewriting them. Also, some people are very keen on the objectives that don't have the word understand, and you might want to supplant that with something um, you're more comfortable with. Let's look at an example just from lesson one. I, I won't do this for every lesson. Just get us through it. The, the soccer team has a ratio of boys to girls of four to one. And let's create a table to show what's going on within the team. So we would certainly start with a ratio of boys. Of, of the simplest example so if we had four boys, we'd have one girl and a total of five players. We could proceed through that, give the kids experience with the idea of you double the number of boys, you would double the number of girls, and you'd have double the number of players. The 
extending that to the point where the kids will be able to create one on their own with a different ratio. So create a table. Good job, everyone. Let's move on. Can we make a tape diagram? Yes, we can. And tape diagrams for the kids will certainly not always be this neat. Um, one thing to help kids with tape diagrams is when they're creating them, you can follow the steps. One thing I like is an anchor line, a line that keeps both tape diagrams growing from the same point. And another is a progression of building where if they already have one tape diagram and they're sure that they're going to have another, but they're not sure how their segments will land, and they know this is, for example, two, we're going to go on, they might want to consider making the last closure open-ended until they're ready and they're comfortable that graphically it looks somewhat similar in terms of units. Um, if we have a tape diagram like this, they can easily share um, the information, I believe. But the question might be, is it more clear saying there are three halves as many boys as girls? Let the kids decide what they prefer. And presumably, you know, there's no right or wrong answer, though I do have a strong preference. Let's look at lesson three example, because it's going to be a different way to tackle these problems. You look at Shani's ribbon, um, they're going to create a table first and then draw a tape diagram to represent this ratio. Again, they're using hand-drawn drawings to explain their mathing. So you look at Shani, you look at Nell, and we know they have some numbers associated with those, so let's look at those numbers. We understand their ribbon, um, we certainly looks like from here that we're assuming that it's 7 inches to 3 inches. Um, the unit is what we're assuming. We know the ratio is 7 to 3. So we have these, uh, I guess, presumably could be centimeters as well. Um, but we have Shani, and what information could we write in there to make it not 7 to 3, something equivalent to 7 to 3. Well, this is what the lesson structure of the concept development is. And so you would see, well, let's say Shani had 2 centimeters for every unit. Um, of those 7 to 2 ratio, that language I stumbled on, sorry. But the idea here is we're doubling the amount of ribbon that Shani has, and so each of those components would have set those blocks, and each of Mel's would now have um, twice that as well. And so when you double that, you'd get uh, the following six, 14 meters to 6 meters, or a ratio of 14 to 6. It's nothing new, but a little bit different. Let's look at what we're going to next, what ratios can we say are equivalent? So once we've given that example, we might take that information away and let them come up with another example. For example, what if you did a multiplier of 3 for both? Then lesson 4, let's make sure we really have this topic. Let's look at the ratios and see if you can find if they're equivalent, and if not, find the correct equivalent ratio. And you'll see students' works according here. Then you'll see them using that same work using it to solve more difficult word problems. And I'm just going to tell you where to reference this. This is in lesson four as well, in example three. When we have an over R all given, and you have to back into the other information. Also within the modules, you'll see things called um, gallery walks. They walk around to different stations to solve problems. I think it's great fun. The, um, another way you'll see the um, a lot of these structures given to the kids as far as tape diagrams. So I want to give you an example of that. Let me go through here. Uh, let's say you have a, um, ignoring the precise definitions, let's go right to the sec circle equivalent ratios here. And kids were, shouldn't they should be expected at this point, less than eight, to find equivalent ratios, both terms. Find the value of those ratios, noticing that they're equivalent and um, being able to explain their math thinking. I believe most teachers could teach all of the material here, but we will see the growth in their differences in the student explanations and the request for the students to explain their work using drawings and words and numbers. All right. Students will also be asked to um, give counter examples for things like this to test the theorem. And we're not asking the kids to take it for example, take it for granted that the theorem is true, but um, let's brainstorm to see if there are any counterexamples. And time is given an example to exercise two in this case in lesson eight to find those. And of course, if we come up with one, that's going to be a problem because there should really not be any counterexamples to the statement that if two ratios are equivalent, then they have the same value. That's going to be pretty much required for all the work in ratios. So 
we will hopefully they do not come up with a counterexample, or maybe that would be a great um, breakthrough for ratio analysis. Anyway, we're going to move on to lesson 12. And this is sort of interesting because they're giving a, a card with a ratio on it, and then they're going to move around the room in search of other participants. Make sure you recognize within um, these lessons, I'm just going to find that card. And that's what it looks like. You have a uh, cards and all the kids get one. And there's actually three sheets. You want to make sure you print those off as a student producible and cut them up and hand them out to the kids. And they will find their partners who have um, the equivalent ratio. That, of course, is the thinking. Yeah, let's just get this thing working again. All right, and you can see that this is just like real life. Just give you a moment here. Right, we'll move on. I think you got the gist of that lesson. Lesson 14 is um, building on that, but they use the Socratic approach to this lesson. And the reason I mentioned that because that is new to some teachers. It's a discussion again, um, very similar to the counter example, and it's going to talk about the big learnings and really deepen their understanding. This is where you'll see your above grade level kids, hopefully. You can ask them more tough and challenging questions that extend their knowledge. Uh, followed up with another Galbert block. You'll see the cooperative learning and the movement pieces. The key points I want you to take from today is the uh, overviews, topic openers, all useful things, exit tickets, the components hopefully you're more familiar with. There's one last piece to the um, this entire unit, you know, kids won't forget this piece. It's the assessment piece. And these assessments, I believe, are written as a uh, beautiful form of assessment. Beautiful form of assessment. Um, but they they don't look like the state assessment does, so that's something to keep in mind. The rubric we use is a rubric of mastery. They're on step one, two, three, or four. And they give explanations of why and not they fit in each line of those rubrics. Assessment questions are certainly well aligned to the common core. Um, they may address multiple focus standards, which is good because there's no way in one assessment can test all the standards without the combination. Scoring the rubric, it's pretty clear we discussed in the rubric materials. All right. I'm going to skip that. What I want to talk about now is um, where you can find other materials. You can find a link to the full presentation. I think it's 45 slides um, by clicking on that link from Engage New York. You can find a copy of this presentation, the short one, the, right, clicking on my website, which is uh, AT Bosi's right here. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Other than that, um, have a great day, and thank you for listening to my module overview.